G'day everyone, Matt Elder Family Bricks here, and today we're going to compare the official release Sonic the Hedgehog LEGO Ideas Set 21331 with a fan made Sonic the Hedgehog Green Hill Zone Modular mock I created. We'll get a bit of a flavour on how they compare with each other, along with a time lapse speed build of the official LEGO set. Free instructions are available at madelder.com forward slash sonic and third party sites like rebrickable.com for my sonic mock. The idea being that we have given enough resources to build your own Sonic the Hedgehog courses. If you do, we'd love to see them via email matt at madelder.com or Instagram at madelder underscore UK. This video is brought to you by McCatsum Holiday Homes in Margate and Broadstairs. Great for a week's holiday or a weekend escape, being just over an hour east of London, UK. Treat yourself to amazing sunsets, a Lego wall, or great food. Visit www.macatsim.com and mention this YouTube video and we'll look after you. We'll start with a size comparison. This is obviously the official release. And then back here is then the mock that I actually did and made up. So you can see quite a size difference. So if we take the loop as a comparison point, you can see the minifigure takes up most of the height there. So it, relative to the games, it's just not in comparison or the same sort of scale. Whereas if we put that same minifigure in the mock which I made up, you can sort of see the loop is much bigger and feels much more in line with the game. And a bit more of a size to side comparison there, you can sort of see just how much the size differential is between the two. This for mine is more of a micro scale with a minifigure in there, whereas the mock which I put together is more of an actual true place scale minifigure that works within it. That is how much more I sort of view this set as something which is more just designed to sit on a shelf it looks like what it needs to look at, so anybody recognizing it, it's going to look and go, okay, rings, you know, halfway points, loop the loop, some TVs, Sonic character, and Eggman, you know, you're ticking all the major boxes there. Then when you look at the instruction book, that becomes pretty clear that's what they're aiming at, because that's the logo from the 1991 for a Sonic the Hedgehog game. And you can sort of see inside it there, the original submission was based around Sonic Mania, which is a much, much later game. But when they did the actual official release, it's obviously much more in that Sonic 1 sort of area. Now I'm going to go through and compare, you know, the sort of mock which I would put together versus the official LEGO release. It's always going to be difficult because I'm always, it's always going to have a bit of bias in terms of what I've done. But I try to remain a little bit objective with it. But at the same time, acknowledge that might not strictly be possible 100% of the time. But I'm sure you'll get a bit of a flavour. We'll start off by quickly running through some of the characters and the minifigures that you get with it. Of course, you're going to get Sonic the Hedgehog minifigure, which is great to get, because previous to this, the only other Sonic one that we had was the LEGO Dimensions, which came out a few years ago, and on the secondary market, they go for about £35 or about $42. So now that we've got this here, obviously it makes Sonic much, much more accessible, and there are some subtle differences. In the Dimensions one, the game has green irises, and I think the smile is on the other side, and you've got some nice printing down on the shoes, and then printing front and back. Here are some off-brand figures which I've had from before, and these, there's about 15 characters for £15, or 15 characters for $20 US, and that's to my doorstep. Yeah, the quality is probably not 100% like LEGO, it's probably maybe about 75%. You know, some of the feet don't hold on or have as a clutch power, but otherwise there's a lot of, you know, jewel moulding and prints and things like that and a lot of the heads are very different so it's not like they're using the same thing just again and again there's actually a bit of variety in there so with that in mind it's a little disappointing that you know we didn't at least get a tails figure or at least one of the other ones i think tails would have been a good one to get possibly even a knuckles you know maybe that leaves room for future expansions and things if they ever do that but when you look at something like this for the price point you sometimes then just sort of wonder you know are we just being told that minifigures are really expensive to make so that they don't really have to do them or have to justify them when you look at some of the off brands and it's like really okay you then have a brick built dr eggman or dr robotnik depending upon your region which is done quite nicely um that i think is one of the only prints in the set along with the grass and then the rest here are stickers so it's done relatively well there's a range of movement in there and a couple of the other little enemies. I think the way that this crab has been done has been quite nice, very simple, yet sort of works. I was looking at doing something which was much, much more elaborate with hooks and things like that. So this is done quite well. And then also to this one here, which you then also have the ability to go through and change that face print there with a different sort of sticker one. So, you know, gives a little bit of variety. So the general scaling that the official release has gone for is a two plate high sort of system and that's within each one of those whereas with the modular units i built it's basically a three high plate system or bricks 
The other interesting detail is how they've gone for the grass on the edges, which is very characteristic. In this case, they've gone with some prints, which is some of the only things which are printed in here. Certainly, when you're going for a more elaborate sort of system with different cheese slopes and plates and tiles, you can get something which probably has a, a better aesthetic to it, but you are chewing through a lot of parts and there's a lot of fiddliness with that. Whereas, you know, going through this here and just putting on a few plates and a couple of quarter pizza circles. In terms of TVs, they've gone from something a little bit smaller with a print on the front, and it's sort of like that 2x2 two two tile print in here, gone for a system where you can just put anything in there. Or here, just taken the print that was there and swapped it onto the TV there, so it gives you a bit of an idea of the size discrepancy. The interesting thing I found with this is they made a point to put a jumper on the back here, which maybe they're going for that old school CRT sort of thing. Why they didn't just use a 1x2 tile? Something like that. That's an interesting little decision. While there's a lot to like about the set, I think one of the biggest misses definitely comes down to the actual Eggmobile itself. So this one on this side is the fan design, and then this one on this side is the official release. The main thing is just the curvature on it. Like this is this one here is pretty bulky and very square. And look, I get it in terms of it's going to be easier to build, particularly on the underside here. There are some tricky little connections and different snot techniques, which to the average builder may not exactly be the easiest thing to do. But this goes through and uses, you know, a couple of stickers to achieve the effects. Whereas here, you know, you're using just basic bricks to be able to get that sort of effect. And then in terms of Eggman going in there, because these have no real grip, he kind of goes in and it kind of works, but he doesn't hold or there's nothing there to hold him in because it's all just tiles and side with snot type things. So he can slide around a little bit. Yeah, it works for what it is, but then as equally, you know, going in there, still feels it's kind of in scale. Obviously this is not built for this sort of thing and you make some modifications to get him to sit down and into it a bit more. But then having this sort of design which you've used here, you can then incorporate, you know, ball and chain and other aspects of it and put it into something which can move along backwards and forwards relatively easy. The rings themselves in the official release are pretty rigid, except for this part here, which, you know, has a mechanism for it to bounce off. Whereas in the one which I built, I wanted it to be more of a play feature. So you can have your character running along and knocks the rings down and they can relatively easily be reset to position to go again. It was interesting to see how they did the bridge because this was something which I sort of agonized over a bit and they've gone for you know a very sort of solid system whereas the design I came up with it had more of a flexibility so certainly when characters are running along it it has a bit of movement and things as it does in the game the only issue with this is that these pieces and connecting pins are generally only in like yellow and blue and one or two other really limited colors so you know the yellow does work ideally this would be reskinned in a color similar to something like that the palm tree itself is pretty close to the original fan design and it was something I considered doing but the main issue at the time was that these green shields here I think either weren't available or they're really expensive. So the fact we got them here, great, more parts to add to the system. As opposed to the palm tree which I came up with which is much more parts intensive and certainly the stem feels pretty weak but wanted to really get into that sort of design that they had in the game and there's a bit of movement and you can sort of sculpt it and have it however you like. The spring here has a you know, pretty straightforward sort of lever mechanism to get it to go up which I'd also designed one doing much the same on the spring, same sort of idea. But I did want to take that a step further and at least have like the game it reacts and bounces back up so there's some interaction with the character and that's basically achieved with just a really simple rubber band mechanism in there. The checkpoint marker has done well and I like the way that they have the ability to spin around to both sort of sides. Whereas the design I used is pretty much more static but you know similar sort of idea. When building it, this felt much more like an architecture set where you get a lot of little small pieces and certainly building up a lot of these sort of tiles and textures here, it was just lots of little plates. There is a slight quirk in the design in that this one here is two plates in one colour and then one on top, whereas when you flip it around to the other side, it's just a solid brick. Now there's been a suggestion that that's so people didn't get confused, but I'm not sure I really buy that because, you know, after you've got a couple hundred plates that you've put in place, you want to sit there and go, oh, you might get one confused. <clears throat> and that's the other interesting little quirk with this. Definitely from this side, it's so that you can view the whole thing. And then on the back side, they do most of it. 
And I get there's going to be some things where you've got hooks and connections and things, but then they have done some printed tiles and things on here. So it's a little strange. It's like, well, are you trying to get both sides or not? And then sort of similar to the idea with the modulars, they then have pins in this side. So, you know, male that side and then female holes here. So, you know, if you had more connecting them together, maybe there's some future expansion if this does well, which would be nice to see. But it is a little odd when you consider sometimes your modular is much wider and they only have single pins but maybe two lots of them so interesting choice that they've chosen there and then internally too the way that these little subsections connect together they've gone for this other system using axles which then get held together by all these plates on the side so here i've prized apart the plates and the tiles so you can sort of see how they get connected together and they're using this i think it's a five length axle so you've got lots of technic bricks with crosses to enable those axles to go through and then it goes and joins into there so it's interesting how they're using a, a blending of internally to the mechanism these sort of double axles but then within the whole system it almost looks like these pins and i can kind of understand that as a display piece it's not meant to come apart but it's kind of like well then why would you include that why not just have a relatively long four by four plates to hold it all together so some interesting design choices there also like the way that they've gone through with these clear headlight bricks to get the stacking effect on those rings that's that's quite an ingenious way of doing that so overall, a great set. I think the price point, yeah, it's a pretty fair price point. Of course, we'd like it five, ten pounds, dollars, sort of cheaper sort of thing, but it sits well in there. They're obviously appealing for the nostalgia market and people more outside of traditional Lego, so I think it's going to do well with there. So happy that this exists, that we're getting the figures back. There's some weird quirks with it and some things I would have liked to have seen. One of my kids who was super into Sonic and had seen the original fan design, the first thing he asked when he saw it is why didn't they have one of these little characters here included? So I think there's little things that they could have done which would have just really enhanced it and certainly having that little character there. In my sort of end of level one, I've sort of had these other little type characters and things that we've had previously released, so they could have been something easily done there. For mine after the loop the loop the next iconic thing is the corkscrew so i know it's really difficult i would have loved to have seen what they could have done with that ultimately if it can draw people in start getting them interested in sonic and then trying to create and extend on the levels that would be fantastic as i've sort of said before all the modular bits and pieces I've done, all the instructions are freely available on metalder.com forward slash Sonic, also on Rebrickable. So hoping that once we start having in real life shows and things, maybe it lends itself quite well to community builds. So people just do different things, bring them along to shows and really expand on that. So certainly anybody in the future, if you're watching this and you do do that, I'd love to see any links or things like that. So drop them in the comments or however, tag me Instagram as well. The rest of the video, mainly I'm just going to do a quick time lapse of how this all comes together so if you check out at this point here thanks very much for watching put sonic down in the comments and i know that you've watched this far emeralds and the sonic stand are also a nice another touch if you've made it this far comment tails down below and i'll know that you watched all the video feel free to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe as it really helps out the channel 
Check out this video for a comprehensive overview and breakdown of the LEGO Sonic Mock that's featured in this video that I created. Here is a quick video of the LEGO Mock playing as if it was a full level of the Green Hill Zone including boss battle. This is a time lapse video of a Sonic the Hedgehog mural I created or alternatively these videos may be of interest. Thanks very much for watching.